Hi, I'm Jennifer Barrett, and I'm the Executive Vice President at Wilson University. In a previous episode, I shared some very interesting current research about Gen Z. And in this episode, I'm going to be interviewing a licensed marriage and family therapist named Beth Baus. So please join me today as we interview Beth Baus to find out more about her views on Gen Z research. Hi, I'm Jennifer Barrett, and I am happy to welcome with me today Beth Baus. I'll give you a little bit of background. Beth Baus holds a master's degree in counseling psychology and also a master's degree in theological studies. She has taught at the college level for over 18 years. She's authored numerous books, and for many years she has facilitated seminars and retreats around the United States. She has had a private counseling practice for years. Lots of this, keep saying years, huh? Yeah. Lots of years. <laughs> it's kind of all blends together. Um, and it's because I'm older now. <laughs> and I just found, not old, just older. Oh yeah, it's okay to be old. Yeah. And I just, um, she was just sharing with me, she was also a crisis counselor um, for a number of grades, but predominantly middle school and high school. She was a crisis counselor for 10 years. So that's great practice with that age range. Um, and personally, oh, she's, uh, did I say you've had a private counseling practice? You did. I did. You've had that I for years? I still do. <laughs> I still do. I love that too. I know. Our Healthy Families is her website. Mm -hmm. And then personally, she's been married to her husband, Mike, for more than 40 years. 42 years this week. That's so exciting. I He's know a it good is. guy. He is a really good guy. Yeah. He'd have to, yeah, a lot of patience. And <laughs> yes. I love him because he lets me fly. That's awesome. That's what spouses should do for each other. Mm -hmm. And then um, she and her husband have two adult children and two grandchildren. And so she, I've asked Beth to join me today because she can share her insights as a marriage and family therapist and years of working with families and with young people. And so we're continuing our discussion on Gen Z and she will have a lot of insight to share. And also as a mother and a grandmother, mm -hmm. you've got uh, little grandkids in Generation Alpha coming I up. That's love the new it. generation. And they are so cute. They are. They're so oh, cute. They are. You've got adorable grandkids. Oh, are you kidding? <laughs> that's, why, that's why I'm here. <laughs> well, so Beth and I um, have reviewed the same research from Jonathan Haidt that I shared in a previous episode. So I wanted to get Beth's insight as a marriage and family therapist about whether or not she sees those same trends, agrees or disagrees with the data and why. So um, I'll start with one of the first main points in the episode, previous episode, was about the increasing rates of anxiety and depression mm -hmm. in Gen Z. And uh, what are your thoughts about that? And, and you can talk about society in general or also specifically within the apostolic movement. I think I think it can be both, um, even though there's some differences in the apostolic movement. Um, nevertheless, as far as anxiety and depression, um, it just depends. I think there's a lot that goes into some of that. I'm not the kind of person that just jumps on stats and says, oh my word, mm -hmm. like we've got these big red flags because we've got all these people having anxiety, depression, because you know, what are we talking about when we talk about anxiety? Are we talking about someone has test anxiety? Hmm. Or are we talking about the type of anxiety that might be a genetic component tied to it and all kinds of other things like OCD? Are we looking at that type of anxiety? So it's really hard to say, oh, we have all these people that, you know, whether it's Gen Z or any other group mm -hmm. that have a lot of anxiety because anxiety and depression, which are completely two different things, all right? Mm -hmm. So we're, depression is a completely different component. Mm -hmm. So what are we talking about? What type of anxiety are we talking at at this level? Or So I guess so what I'm trying to say, yeah, what I'm trying to shows. say is, you know, when we talk about, you know, do you see a rise in anxiety? Well, what kind of anxiety are you talking about? You know, are more people coming to therapists to um, be treated for anxiety? Mm -hmm. I don't know. That tends to be one of my specialties, anxiety and depression. And so um, people would naturally come to me because that's a specialty. Do I see more of it? 
I've seen that for years. Mm -hmm. It seems pretty consistent. I don't advertise. I've got plenty of business, if that's what you want to call it, clients. Mm -hmm. I don't say that disrespectfully. But, but it doesn't seem um, like it's increasing? Well, no. Okay. But, however, there's things that happen in our world where we do see some increase. Like the last time, when COVID hit mm -hmm. and there was all that confusion, I didn't even have time to worry about COVID because I was inundated with people mm. that had really high anxiety because of what was going on in our world. Mm. So, you know, I know that some of his research kind of focuses on the social media. What I've noticed in my practice is that it just really kind of depends on what's going on out there. Now, mm -hmm. Gen Z, these groups, just like other groups, if we're talking about some of the younger versions, Whatever it is that their parents are dealing with usually bleeds down to the children. And it might not look the same, but it does bleed down. So, so you know, do we have an abundance of children coming to us? Um, I don't see that. Hmm. I don't see that. I think that it's situational. I think, um, yeah. So the last time I really saw an issue uh, and we could not even find therapists to be treating these people because there were so many people. It was during COVID, mm. probably for that first <clears throat> year. <clears throat> and then things kind of trickle down and then certain things happen in our world and then we see a rise up. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. things kind of trickle down. It's just kind of interesting. And that's one of the things you mentioned, you referred to Jonathan Haidt's research. Mm -hmm. uh, he's He was trying to find um, a, an explanation for what would see some of these trends in anxiety, right. depression, suicide, what would have explained? And I think he acknowledges that it's multiple things, but he mm -hmm. does try to pinpoint it in his research mm -hmm. to um, social media and smartphones, to that era. Mm -hmm. And if I'm understanding, you're saying that could be a component of it, but it's definitely broader than that. Absolutely. And then we have to remember that Gen Zs, they've grown up in a fully digital age. Yes. Digital natives. Okay. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So is that a good thing? I think it's a great thing. I think that's just advancement. But um, does there need to maybe be a little bit more control? I think so with some people. Maybe not with everybody, but with some people. But that can we could be talking about donuts. I mean, do you, yeah. know, do you know what yeah. I mean? There's there's got to be control in whatever we do. We just need to live more of a life of balance. But I know that's what he's focusing on. I see it more like okay, we have the internet now, mm -hmm. and we've had that for a while. There's a lot of exposure there that we didn't have before. Mm -hmm. So, um, is it social media? Is it the internet? Is it the exposure? Is it the overwhelming amount of um, of knowledge that's out there that we've never had before? Mm -hmm. Is it just overwhelming? Right. And maybe some of right. this is causing some of the anxiety. The amount of input. Yes. Oh yeah, it doesn't stop. Right. I mean, oh my right. word, everywhere you go. So I think all of this kind of plays into it. I don't, I personally don't want to say it's just one thing. Mm -hmm. I, I respect his research. I'm not saying it's not correct. I'm just saying that's not how I view it. Mm -hmm. And do you see, um, I, I, let me ask you this, do you uh, counsel people, I know you do within church, do you counsel people who are not apostolic Absolutely. as well? Okay. I probably, more than half, probably half, 60%, 65 are not apostolic. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they can be of all different religions. They can so, be... Yeah, they can be Jews, Muslims. It, it doesn't matter. So then you are seeing larger, I mean, you can see then trends in a larger population, oh, not just within the no, apostolic movement. No, not just within the apostolic movement. Okay. Yeah. So then um, you're not necessarily seeing, are you seeing maybe certain types of anxiety? Are you seeing anxiety increase at all or certain types of anxiety? I know mean, you mentioned during the pandemic, but not pre-pandemic. Uh, and not really since then. You you didn't experience that in your counseling practice, that people were showing more signs of anxiety or certain types? I think types. anxiety has been something that's been going on for a long, long time. I think we have more knowledge mm -hmm. about what anxiety looks like and the types of anxiety. And then there's things that kind of go under the umbrella of anxiety. Um, so I don't, I, I don't want to, I, I just think this is something that's been going on for a long time. 
I mean, we can look at scripture. There's plenty of evidence yeah. of anxiety. Yeah. Well, that's you know? true. Good point. I mean, my word, look at what Elisha, you know, mm -hmm. sitting in a cave, you know, because he was scared of the queen. Mm -hmm. And that was anxiety. Um, clearly mm -hmm. was depression, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, he just blew up all that stuff, you know? <laughs> you know. Did all those amazing miracles, you know? And, and God spoke and all the fire. Yeah. And, and all that. And, and then, then this lady around. doesn't like And she's killed all these other prophets. Mm -hmm. And then he goes and he hides in a cave. Yeah. And he's scared. And that's anxiety and depression, too. Mm -hmm. I think it's been going on for a long time. I think we just have names for different things now. So do you think, um, I'm, do you feel that, uh, I guess this is a sense that I get, um, is that it's more popular for young people to fall into the trap of victimhood? Um, and I know I'm giving a generalization, yeah. but that's kind of everybody, somehow it maybe puts them on the higher moral ground if they're a victim too. Um, I, I just, it seems like there are young people who, they, they've got good families, good homes, and I'm not saying any are perfect. So yeah. I mean, there's always room for improvement in any household. But overall, they've got a good life and they'll still live with anxiety or, or depression or a negative sense of self, um, seeing everything through a negative lens. And I just, I guess I struggle with, why <laughs> yeah. or how to help that yeah i don't i i don't relate to that uh -huh. I, I mean where things they've actually got a good life of at least from the outside looking in uh -huh. they they seem like they have a good life and yet um the negative is just in their mind exacerbated and okay and when you say all that what i'm <clears throat> thinking in my head a couple things one it's easy for us to assume things mm -hmm. so you might see a family in church and, from and the outside, they might seem yes. to have it all together yes. and yeah. we don't really know what's going on in that That's home true. so there might be that uh, a lot of behaviors in children I believe of course we got that nature nurture thing mm -hmm. but I believe a lot of behaviors are learned mm -hmm. okay so one of the first things that I might do if I have a teenager one I'm going to listen yes if they have a negative uh, viewpoint mm -hmm. okay so um, if there's a lot of negativity, I'm going to listen because I need to try to understand where that's coming from. Is mm -hmm. that coming from a behavior that's learned maybe through a parent um, or somebody else? Uh, is there maybe some abuse that's going on with that child? And maybe that's how they're, uh, you know, displaying their anger. That's, you know, maybe they were sexually abused or maybe they've been physically abused. So we can't just assume that, oh, why do you have this great life and you've got this negative outlook? Mm -hmm. There is a reason why somebody has a negative outlook. Okay, so is the negative outlook maybe the kids that they surround themselves with, the people they surround themselves with, you know, because, you know, they say that you're really like the five people you surround yourself with. And so, um, you know, are they picking up on that? Are there some self things going on? Let's just say we have a young lady that maybe has a real negative viewpoint about life. What's going on inside her that's putting that out? Is that because she feels ugly? Is her, you know, inner self-talk negative? Mm -hmm. Has she gotten in that habit mm -hmm. of, you know, talking in a negative way to, about herself? Mm -hmm. And so that plays out. Do we have something genetic going on? Do we have something physiologically going on? You know, mm -hmm. do we have anxiety because uh, there's a vitamin D deficiency? You know, people don't realize that there's so many things that go on physically mm -hmm. that display mental itself yeah. out in anxiety and depression. I had a young man come in, early 30s, and um, he couldn't go to work anymore. He worked in a big, um, a, a big like warehouse, no windows. He worked many hours. He came home. He got on his computer, um, and he was Hispanic. As I got talking to him, his parents had to had literally drive him to my office 
um, because he couldn't drive anymore. I mean, he was just, his world was getting smaller. Mm -hmm. So um, I listened to him, try to figure out what's going on. And I sent him to the doctors because I had this feeling, one, a lot of Hispanics um, as well as African-Americans are lactose intolerant. Mm -hmm. So that meant that there is a possible vitamin D deficiency. And he worked in a closed place where there's no light other than fluorescent lights. And he went home and he didn't do much outside. Mm, kind of made me think we might be looking at a chemical imbalance. Went to the doctors, absolutely spot on. Wow. Vitamin D deficiency. And what does the a vitamin D deficiency do or cause? It can cause um, anxiety. It really? causes anxiety, all the symptoms of anxiety. And it, wow. yeah, I know. And so, and then sometimes when you have anxiety, then it can cause depression because you don't know what's going on and you're, mm -hmm. you know. So, went to the doctors, got some uh, vitamin D uh, pills, took those. He was well. Wow. Just turned it around. Completely around. So, again, you gave that scenario, and I'm thinking, we can't just go with like, and think that because someone's got a negative outlook on life. That something's wrong with them. Yeah, or maybe it has to do with social media. <clears throat> or There's a lot of things that play into that. Although you talk about the, and I do appreciate that, I mean, you kind of gave a laundry list. If you have a teen who's struggling with anxiety of listening, getting to the why, but right. then also that why could be multiple reasons. Oh, yeah. And so you really don't know what track to take mm -hmm. for helping them until you identify the why more clearly. That's right. My mom had agoraphobia, which is a anxiety that uh, she, uh, we'd find her um, in the closet. And so, mm -hmm. and she had so much anxiety that she couldn't even get out of the closet. And she suffered with horrible depression. Wow. Um, and then as I move on in life, I always suffered with anxiety. Then I went into menopause, perimenopause, and then go into menopause. Um, and one thing that I don't think people realize is that when women especially go into perimenopause, a lot of times your anxiety just goes off out the roof. It got so bad for me. And it's physiological. It's all a physiological thing. Even though, you know, it ran in my family, but... I was able to take control of it mm -hmm. with a lot of, you know, thinking, overcoming, trying mm -hmm. to do the right things. Nevertheless, um, I ended up at the doctor's. I was getting ready to go do a talk in Italy. And I did the research and Italy is full of hills. And I had to go and get on an escalator, which was my biggest, one of my biggest fears was these, all of a sudden, I mean, you know, you're this like normal person, you know, and, and then you become this person that is just succumbing to the anxiety. Wow. And I'll never forget, I, I would go on an escalator and if you were there, even if I didn't know you, I would jump on right on. behind you. <laughs> And then I'd be going up this escalator and the person's like, you're in my space. But I didn't care. <laughs> I didn't care. Okay, so I was doing that as I was kind of getting around the anxiety, noticing that things were kind of fluctuating up mm -hmm. and down. Um, and then I came to Sacramento one time, and this was something, I, I came for a conference or something. And I'll never forget it. Uh, it was one of the first times I'm dealing with all this. Well, the, the Sacramento airport's... Um, their elevator is glass. Mm -hmm. Yes, in one of the terminals. <laughs> oh, so yes. true. So yeah. I'll never forget thinking, I'll just go in the elevator. Oh, wrong, wrong move. Yeah. It doesn't go very high. No, no, no. <laughs> Not so sure that man that I hugged on appreciated me so much. <laughs> nevertheless, <laughs> nevertheless, I went to the doctors and I actually got on medication for mm. a while. And a lot of people don't know that, but I'm going to say, because I'm telling you, very, very small dose, mm -hmm. and um, it really helped me. But when it's a physiological imbalance, sometimes oh, you need that help from medication. Oh, absolutely. So two weeks, in two weeks, I went from, I could hardly leave my house, mm. 
even to go to church, it was a deal because I couldn't get in a car, having major panic attacks in the car, having, couldn't get on escalators, to wow. completely turning around. Now, again, I'm just gonna say this, I am not a huge advocate for medication, period. Mm -hmm. However, there are times. Mm -hmm. And for me, that was a time. So my kids, after about two weeks, said, uh, my doctor was Dr. O, and they said, could you please thank Dr. O? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because I went from this like mess of a person to completely normal. So what, go, what would maybe be a trigger for a parent to know if their child, if their anxiety or their depression is at a level that they might need more than counseling? Or how do they even know when it's at a level of needing counseling? Maybe can you say what, what parents should look for to kind of empower them to, to address and help their, whether it's a preteen or a teen, to help them through that? You know what? I think, um, I think there's two things to this, okay? One, I don't think, even though I am a professional counselor, I don't think it's something that we need to have every child go to a counselor. I think that for the most part, Parents need to just be parents and see what kind of need that their children need and maybe spend some time with them and try to figure it out and maybe do a little research if that's what it takes. Mm -hmm. But if you find that your kids never leave their room, that might be one indication. If you find that... Isolating themselves? Yeah, they're really isolating themselves. From the family themselves. and their friends? Absolutely. Okay. Um, and now it's natural for a teen to isolate themselves from their family. Okay, they come to mm -hmm. a place where they're just trying to stretch their wings, you know? And so, you know, you're thinking, oh, let's have this family vacation, and we've done it every single year since you've been one, you know? And they hit 14, and they really don't want to go with you. There's mm -hmm. probably nothing wrong with that child. That's kind of natural. It is very natural. They want to... They want to be with their their friends. And so you're going to have to find a fine balance. I'm not saying let them do everything that they want to do, but right. I am saying that let's do a balance thing. Okay, you go with me this time, and next time maybe you do something. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because you know that they're it's natural for them to naturally pull away from you because we're trying to create adults that can live in that really tough world. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. back to what we were talking about, how do you know? You start really noticing some differences. Like, for example, maybe they're disheveled. Mm. Maybe they're not showering like they used to. Or maybe they're not dressing nice. Maybe they're really angry inside. Maybe they're not eating right. And it's natural. Like, they have, you know, sometimes want to eat. them, But you started noticing, like, man, they've lost 10, 20 pounds. And don't let that keep on going. Get them some help. Mm -hmm. It's okay for us to get a professional help them. Probably the first place to start would be take them to their doctor and get a full physical. I send a lot mm -hmm. of my clients to the doctors and say, go get a full physical because we could be looking at something else. Right, right. And That's so a great point. let's make sure it's not your thyroid. Make sure that you don't have anemia. Make sure you don't have all these other things that could be causing some of the behavior. The vitamin D deficiency. The vitamin yeah. D deficiency. So we do all that first. And then, um, and then find a counselor that you can trust, that you feel confident. It is okay for mom and dad to go into the counselor first and talk to them about your concerns before the child goes in. Okay. So a lot of times parents don't think they have any rights. It's like mm -hmm. you have all the rights. Well, I think because we see society eroding parental rights that schools yeah. and others can do so many things now to children without parental approval that it sometimes parents don't realize the rights they have. Yeah. And then we got to remember, too, what the media is putting out, too. Mm. I think for the most part, even the teachers, I mean, they want to do the right things. They have children, too. They don't want anyone taking their rights. So we got to We kind of balance everything by, OK, everything that they're telling us isn't necessarily true. It's definitely not balanced. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I hope that helps. Yes. Unfortunately, we have to stop our conversation with Beth here, but we will be continuing it in the next episode. So please be sure to join me as we hear more about research related to Gen Z.